Hi guys, my last video was very well received, so thank you very much for all the thumb ups, the subscribes, and the comments. I really enjoyed reading the comments. And uh, in this video, we'll cover how to create that scrolling effect. So here's the circuit. This is ESP12. It has a lot more pins than the ESP01. But the only reason I use this chip is because this is one of the first ones that has the ADC, the analog input right here. The ESP01 do not have an analog input, so you can't use the potentiometer with the uh, ESP01 without adding extra circuit. Let's just start with the power here. 5 volt comes in to the regulator here. 3 volts comes out. Optionally, you could put a power. I find it useful to to see that it actually I sometimes forget to turn it on so that indicates that I actually have turned it on and all the pluses here that are unlabeled are all the output from the regulator so these are all 3.3 volts the only one that is 5 volt is the one that's coming in so that's power I discovered that without this capacitor here sometimes the ESP doesn't boot up correctly um, I guess there is enough dropout voltage from uh, powering all these LEDs so I put in 470 but I heard that the 100 microfarad capacitor works just fine, but I only have a 470, so that's what I use. Okay, so that was power. Next, let's talk about the FTDI. This is the device that convert the USB signal from the PC to serial that the ESP understands. And in the past, I've been using the 5 volt FTDI because that's what I had. And I have to use a couple of resistors to shift the level from the 5 volt signal from the FTDI to the 3.3 volts that the ESP wants. But I recently bought this guy off eBay. He's a 3.3 volt FTDI. Actually, he's switched. You can switch it back and forth here. Yeah, there's a little jumper here that you can switch whether you want a 5 volt or a 3 volt signal. And these are my other ones that only has 5 volts. The other thing that the other ones did not do is it has all these other pins. And one of them is RTS and the Arduino IDE for ESP actually use this pin. By using this pin, we can now send the code from the IDE to the ESP without having to flip any switches, which is very convenient. So there's the pin that I used that I solder here. There is also, it's also going to use the DTR. Okay, so there is the DTR, goes to GPIO0, and there is the RTS, goes to reset, and there is a 10K pull-up resistor here to prevent the ESP from restarting when I unplug this guy. The rest of them is straightforward. Ground goes to ground, and it goes to, of course, shared with that ground too. The, uh, there is no power coming out of the FTDI because we don't want to power the ESP using the FTDI from the USB. We want to power this using our voltage regulator here. And the RX-TX is, as usual, swapped. So the TX should go to the RX, and the RX should go to the TX. The display is pretty straightforward, really. This is an I2C device from Adafruit, and it takes basically two pins. Well, four if you count power, so you give it power. And then two more pins, one for data and one for clock. And the data comes from GPIO0, and then the SCL, the clock, comes from GPIO2. So the ESP basically sends the bits that is needed to display this using just those two wires. And finally, let's talk about this ADC. This uh, tripped me a little bit because on the Arduino, the analog input goes from 0 through 5 volts, and that maps in the code to 0 through 1023. Um, on the ESP, however, the input here only goes from 0 through 1 volt. Even though we are a 3.3 volt device, this ADC will not take anything higher than 1 volt. So if you put in 1.1 volt in here, it will stay at 1023. That tripped me up for a while. To overcome that, I put a voltage divider here. So if you do the calculations, basically there's 2.3 volts up here and there's at the maximum one volt down here. And so by changing the resistor here, you can go all the way down to ground or all the way up here at 10K. And at 10K, this is going to be one volt right here. So now, even though we have a 3.3 volt power supply, this pin will only go from 0 through 1, which will map to 0 to 1023 in the code. Okay, let's go write some code, huh? We'll start with nothing. First, let's bring in the libraries. Then we'll instantiate the 8x8 eight eight matrix. This object here will represent our matrix. Now we're ready to actually initialize our matrix. 
the 70 is actually the address of the matrix so you, you can have several of them and let's see somewhere in here yeah there is a uh, little pads here and by putting a dab of solder on these pads you could choose what address you put in here so I think you can have up to seven of them if I remember right yeah there it is you can choose the address between 70 and 77 so actually eight for starters let's see if we could just plot a single pixel so this is a the 0 comma 0 is the X and Y that will be the top left corner and then the 1 is the color which is minus a single color but Adafruit also make multicolor ones so you put one for one color and put two for the other color this won't run yet we need two more things <laughs> the first thing we need is to tell the matrix library to send the data to the actual display because this drop pixel all happen within the library there's like a bitmap in the library but this actually doesn't draw anything onto the display to do so we need to tell it to actually write it to the display and had we been doing this on an Arduino instead of an ESP we'd be done this will actually work however because this library was intended to be written for the Arduino it defaults let's see where is that okay right here the wire library is defaulted to pin A4 and A5 which we do not have <laughs> so we have a GPIO 0 and GPIO uh, 2 and to overcome that we need to actually tell the wire library to use those pins okay we're finally ready I'm going to uh, uh, compile and upload so it's compiling now we will get some warnings here about the fact that this command apparently has been deprecated but I think that's a better choice to actually use this command than before I discovered this command what I did is I actually went into the library and modify the wire uh, begin that is in the library the wire begin that is within the Adafruit library do not have any parameters and you can put a parameter in here which is what was suggested here so you do a wire begin and then you put 0 2 here like, or like that actually but unfortunately this these line this line here is within the Adafruit library and I don't want to modify the library hey there is our a single pixel <laughs> so let's uh, do the next step of course armed with this draw pixel in theory you could draw any pixel anywhere at any time you could make any pattern you want including letters but it would be kind of tedious thankfully Adafruit comes to the rescue they've already had a command to draw characters intuitively to draw a character you say draw a char so uh, let's erase this sentence we don't need that anymore so a draw char simply take the similar parameters that's the x and the y position across and down what character you want to draw in this case an h and then these are the same thing colors foreground and background colors and then the size of the character so uh, for my little tiny display one is the one the only one that work if I when I put two I could see a giant blob <laughs> so let's try this one thing I forgot to mention is that notice how I have not been flipping any switches so as soon as it the compile is done down here it will start uploading without me having to do any intervention I mean it's very similar to the uh, Arduino so it just started uploading as you can see and the lights blinking hopefully you could see it on the FTDI here but that's because I have those two lines the DTR and the RTS so the RTS resets the ESP whenever it needs to and the DTR brings it into the firmware program mode so very convenient here's our age so as you can see it is real easy to draw any character we want so now the next thing we need to do is to basically draw a couple of them okay let's draw another character I'm just gonna copy paste that line let's put an E in here but this time we don't want it to be right on top of each other so that's the zero zero we want it to be a little bit to the right so it'll be like zero one two three four five let's put it on a six because uh, we don't want to be right next to each other so let's put it on location six and that should draw our second letter okay there's our E notice how because we our matrix is not big enough it just slopped it up right there and I took advantage of that side effect so to do the hello YouTube all I did is I actually print the whole hello YouTube over here so now 
let's see if we could shift it to the left and that should be pretty easy because all we are, we're doing is we are going to shift it to location negative one actually I'm gonna make that zero and I'm gonna say subtract one from that one and subtract one from here so that should shift it one character to the left and there it is so the leftmost column of that H is now actually off the screen at location negative one which there is no LED matrix there so that's a principle and all we have to do is just keep on doing that keep on shifting it to the left one at a time I'm sure you guys are impatient to see the final results so let's just jump ahead go to my uh, Hackaday.io page here and go grab the source code from here yeah everything that we talk about is here so there's a circuit and here is the, the code that actually ran it's not that long as you can see I'm just gonna clobber it right there so there it is and it's going at a very low speed right now let's go increase it okay let's start from the top these are the same that's the same as before but now we have a variable which is the offset instead of that hard-coded negative one that I did before we're actually going to have a variable that we will keep incrementing so it's at zero and in one and in two as the offset gets higher and higher we will shift the letters further and further to the left yeah let's take a closer look at this line here um, to explain it easier I'm going to take that out for now and I'm going to take the first space out of here as you can see we have all the letters in one string now instead of individual lines here we figure out how long the whole string is I'm going to make that shorter so let's say hello so that's five characters and down here on our main loop every time we go through the loop we're going to draw every single one of those characters so I will go from 0 to 4 when I is 0 this will be 0 so we draw the 0th character right here the H at location 0 0 just like before when I is equal to 1 we're going to draw this at location 6 comma 0 it will be shifted just like we draw we saw on the E earlier and this of course is message sub 1 which is now the E and so on and so forth so by the time we're done here we got all the letters drawn up now I'm going to undo the reason I put a space in here I wanted to start the animation with a blank so that way the very first time it will not just plop an H right there but instead it will plop a blank and then it will shift the H into a view that's why that space is there and now let's talk about this offset the offset is uh, initially 0 so the very first time we go through this loop everything will be drawn at 0 and then 6 and then 12 and so on and so forth and of course only the first two letters is visible at this time and we draw the display and that shows that and then we increment the offset so now the offset is 1 1 is not yet larger than 6 times 5 so we don't do this we keep on going with the offset equal to 1 oh this is pretty cool we read the potentiometer remember this value ranges from 0 to 1023 and if you haven't seen this map function it's pretty cool actually so it will take whatever value you have in here which is 0 through 1023 and then you tell it what is the actual range that you expect in theory this should go to 1023 like I've been saying but in practice uh, when I measure it um, it's only going to about a thousand and so I just put 950 to make sure that it actually goes to the whole range and what it will do is it will map this range to another range notice I even got it backwards so when it's at zero when it's at a very minimum speed I want to be a very high number for my delay and then as it gets higher and higher towards 1023 or towards 950 it'll get lower and lower I'll do it up to 30 which is the fastest super speed that I uh, thought was reasonable <laughs> I mean you could put zero there if you want to that's how the delay work based on the potentiometer very simple and so we go back up here again and this time remember offset is equal to 1 so now all the letters uh, H E L O will be drawn one one pixel to the left and then we do the delay again and then we go back up there and draw it two pixels to the left and so on and so forth until we reach all the letters we've, we've drawn this very last space and when that happens this offset will be equal to max length times 6 and we'll start over 
and the cycle begins again with the blank right here so that's it <laughs> very simple and if you guys have any questions post them in the comments and I'll answer them thanks for watching guys talk to you guys later bye bye <laughs>